This right here is the Minis Forum MSA2, and it's powered by AMD's Ryzen 9 9955 HX processor, which packs 16 cores and 32 threads. And that's some serious workstation performance, all fit into this tiny chassis the size of your average router. This by no means is your typical mini PC. This is a powerful workstation. Now there are no flashy RGBs, no gimmicks, just raw efficient power. Whether you're editing 4K videos, doing some light gaming, or spinning up virtual machines for your home lab, or you're looking to ditch the bulky desktop tower like I am to reduce the footprint, this might be the most capable PC that you can actually use to do all that. In this video, I'll be unboxing the Minis Forum MSA2, breaking down the specs, and show you some real world performance and see if it's actually worth, you know, getting this device. But first, here's the backstory on how I got this. So over the past few months, I've been on a mission to reduce or downsize the size of my home lab. I started out using a full-size gaming PC as my home server. It was an overkill in every way. It's loud, it's hot, and it's way too bulky for what I actually need it for. So I set to fix it. The goal is to reduce the size, heat, noise, and power usage without sacrificing any performance. And that search led me to that Minis Forum MSA2. This PC claims to offer true server-grade performance, something so small the size of an average router. Now, a big shout out to Minis Forum for sending this unit for a review. They have no input or control on what I say or what I do in this video. Everything I'm saying is based on my own experience and testing that I did on this device. With that said, let's start by unboxing this mini PC workstation and see what's inside. All right, so the Minis Forum MSA2 comes in different variations. You can either get the Ryzen 9 7945HX, or like I have in this case, the Ryzen 9 9955HX. And it comes for the GPU, it comes with a Radeon 610M, which I've personally never used in the past, so we'll find out how it fares in gaming. For memory, it comes with 64 gigabytes of DDR5 running at uh, 56 megahertz. And for storage, off the shelf, this comes with one terabyte of NVMe SSD. All right, so let's try and open this up. All right, time to unbox this device, see what's inside. And we have the Minis Forum MSA2, the device itself. Let's see what else we get inside the box. So you get the power adapter, an HDMI cable. You also get something in here, some screws, I'm sure for the uh, M.2 NVMe or U.2 NVMe's see what we get on the other side so the on the other side we actually get the power adapter so one thing with minis forum is that they don't integrate the power supply within the device it's always external and separate so keep that in mind so time to open this bad boy up say bad boy all right so let's look at the front first so on the front you get the power button a headphone jack, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and one USB 1 port. And on the back, it's no different than the Minis Forum MSA1 that some of you might be familiar with. So on the back, you get two SFP ports that are capable of running 10 gigabits per second. Uh, you do get additional 2.5 gig LAN ports, the normal RJ45. You do get two Type-C ports on the back, and you get HDMI port, which is HDMI 2.1, and you get additional two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports on the back. All right, let's go a step further and open this device up. So on the back, you have eight screws, and for some reason, these were seriously too tight. I had to apply a lot of torque or force to, you know, unscrew them. So once you have eight screws removed, we can, Kind of get inside the device and see what's in there 
So once it's open, there is this uh, button on the back, which you gotta press, and you have to keep it in this position. So press that button, and you can just slide over this plate, and it comes out. And in here, you get that one terabyte of NVMe SSD. Now you can remove this to get to the additional two slots for the NVMe SSD. And right behind this, we have the additional NVMe SSDs. So this is the one where you have, you know, you can install up to 15 terabytes of U2 SSD. And then these two where you can add additional four, up to four terabytes of NVMe SSD. Now to install your PCIe card, you gotta flip this device over and just move this plate out. And this comes out pretty easily. And right here is where you can install your uh, PCIe 16X slot, up to 16X slot card in here. Okay, so what I was trying to say there is that the PCIe slot looks like an X16 slot, but the total speed it can work up to is X8. On the plus side, you can apply PCIe bifurcation, meaning that you can run up to two devices using bifurcation at uh, X4 speed. So down the road, I do plan on using the NVIDIA graphics card with this device just to see how far I can stretch the gaming part. And not only that, I might be able to run some LLMs or AI locally on this PC. Putting it together is quite easy. All you gotta do is put this plate back and slide it over, flip it out and take this and slide it in like, like so, and just screw it back up. Now let's talk about storage. This unit comes pre-installed with one terabyte of NVMe SSD, which is fast for most use cases. But if you want to upgrade your storage, Mini's Forum gives you a lot of flexibility here. You get three SSD slots. The first slot supports either a M.2 NVMe or a U.2 SSD, which you can use for more storage, up to 15 terabytes. The second and third slots support longer M.2 drives, which can support up to four terabytes each, running at full PCIe 4.0 times four speed. This means that if you're doing things like video editing, running multiple virtual machines, or just want tons of local storage, you're totally covered in that area. In total, you can configure up to 23 terabytes of storage on this device. If you're wondering why go mini PC, it's not about saving desk space, it's all about efficiency. Less cables, less clutter, less noise, and low power consumption overall, while being powerful enough to outperform many full-size desktops. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in testing out how this PC, uh, the Minis Forum MSA2 with Ryzen 9955HX stacks up against a Ryzen 9800X3D, which is good for gaming. Let me know if you want me to do that sort of comparisons in the comments below, and I might just make that video. All right, so let's cover some non-home lab use cases just to see what this device is capable of. If you're into video editing, especially 4K video editing, and you have multiple timelines, having a 16 core CPU with 32 threads means faster rendering time, smoother scrubbing through timeline, and way less time for waiting. All right, so to test out the workstation capabilities, I fired up this device, and the good thing is that Mini's Forum MSA2 comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, and right from the get-go, I realized how much I don't like Windows anymore. It took roughly 20 to 25 minutes just to con get configured and boot me onto the desktop. And I made sure to unplug the LAN just so I don't have to wait for the updates or have to, you know, create that online account that Microsoft forces you to do. So I kept my network cable unplugged and I created a local account and got to my desktop. For the very first test, what I did was install DaVinci Resolve so I can test out how video rendering will work on this device. So for this test, I took one of my old videos, which is about Hisense U6 TV, and it's about a 10 to 11 minute video with 4K footage. And also for doing comparisons, I compared this to my M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, and the new M4 Mac Mini just to see how much faster this device is. So when rendering this video on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it took 
five minutes and 16 seconds to render that same video. On the M4 Mac Mini, it took six minutes and 35 seconds to render that video. And on the Minis Forum MSA2, it took two minutes and 34 seconds to render that same video. So if you talk about performance, you're getting around 68 to 69 percent more performance compared to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, which is a huge gain if you are, you know, rendering a lot of videos. The next thing I tested was gaming on this device. And just by any means, this is not geared at gamers at all. This is not a gaming device, but just to see what it can deliver, I just wanted to test out how a game would work on this device. So I went ahead and downloaded Steam and installed Counter-Strike 2. So for Counter-Strike 2, I averaged around 35 to 50 frames per second and do keep in mind I was running this at 1080p and I was at medium settings so overall the game quality was not good at all and in this case I only tested with one game because I quickly learned that you know it's hard to game on this machine maybe adding a graphics card later will help boost that and it should be much more playable at that point. Now, since this has Windows 11 Pro installed, I went ahead and enabled Hyper-V. Hyper-V is a hypervisor similar to, you know, VMware or Proxmox. And from there, I went ahead and created a virtual machine for running Linux on this device. And that ran smoothly. And I only gave it like four cores and, uh, you know, eight gigabytes of RAM. So everything worked fine on that aspect as well. So for having a powerful workstation, I think this device is quite good. Basically, if you have creative or technical workflows that are gonna be compute heavy, then you will benefit from using this workstation. And gaming, well, let's just leave that for another video. Now down the road, I do plan on making a video where I will connect this with an Nvidia graphics card. So if you are interested, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely make that video. Now let's talk about some home lab use cases. Now, if you're into home labs, this thing is kind of the dream machine. In my next videos, I will dive deeper into setting this exact PC as my home lab and give you some use cases. With 16 cores and 32 threads, the MSA2 is perfect for running Proxmox or even Hyper-V for running multiple virtual machines in parallel. I'm talking about running Ubuntu servers, Windows 10 or 11 workstations in a virtual environment, running Docker containers, PFSense, media servers like Jellyfin or Plex, you name it, this device can run it all, all on the same machine. And because it supports up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and triple NVMe slots, you got enough memory and storage to run everything pretty smoothly. The dual 10 gigabit SFP plus ports and the dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports give you plenty of networking power and flexibility. Now to fully test the home lab use case, what I did, I went ahead and installed Proxmox on this machine and I moved over my virtual machines and my containers over from my main server onto the server except for my NAS, I left my NAS on the main server for right now. So once everything got moved over, it seems like everything's working quite well without breaking a sweat at all. Everything is running quite smoothly and I still have enough room to spin up more virtual machines since I have more cores than my original machine. I have 16 cores and 32 threads in this case. I do also have a 10 gig router, but I don't have the SFP plus connection yet. So. I'll be testing out 10 gig capabilities down the road, but for my use case, the 2.5 gig also works quite good as well. For my Proxmox containers, I have my Jellyfin server, I have my Linux, uh, you know, virtual machines running Ubuntu server, I have two of those, and I have a dedicated Linux machine that runs my, you know, content tracker and my, you know, uh, Glance dashboard and my WireGuard and all that. So I got everything ported over successfully without any issues. I even migrated my SQL Server virtual machines and everything was pretty smooth and seamless getting transferred over. Now let's talk about some cons. So I thought that this device would be a quiet, you know, workstation, but it's really, really loud. I have it on my desk right now and it gets quite loud when I'm, you know, rendering a video or, you know, running something process intensive. And this is what the device sounds like under full load.
It is quite loud. And by no means you can put this on your desk. You better put this somewhere far away where you cannot hear it. Now, who should not buy this device? Now, this device is not for everyone. If you don't need 16 cores or 10 gigabit ethernet, and you just want a basic server for running, you know, Plex, Jellyfin, or some, you know, virtual machines, using something like a B-Link S13 Mini, or even Mini's Forum UN12, which I did do in-depth videos on, should be plenty for that. So do check out those videos. I'll link them up here somewhere. So do check them out if you are trying to, you know, get started on your home lab and you have maybe a smaller budget. I do have that covered in my other videos. Now let's talk about the noise and power consumption. At idle, this device is drawing between 25 to 30 watts of power. And under load, at peak, it's drawing around 120. And that's all down to that Ryzen 9955HX processor. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe hit that bell icon to stay updated for more videos. And I'll see you in my next one.